Good morning to you. Mark South of HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It is now Sunday, November 1st, 2020. Our clocks have changed. At least hopefully all of you have changed your clocks. We're now on standard time, yet the still very busy hurricane season continues. It doesn't care about time changes. Here we are. I don't know. That was a weird segue, but whatever. We are now tracking ADA. Technically speaking, the most name storms we have ever had. The 28th name storm of the 2020 hurricane season. Here's a look at it on satellite imagery, at least the wide shot. And you can see it down here in the Caribbean Sea, if I can get the telestrator to work. All right, there we go. Here it is down here, a kind of compact system, but it has a lot of energy to work with in the Western Caribbean as the water temperatures there are still very warm. The upper ocean heat content is very formidable. And the overall environment in this region, the moisture, the upper level winds, so forth and so on, are going to be very conducive for this to strengthen. And I think it's going to strengthen quite quickly as it comes in here and then bends to the southwest. Very similar to that typhoon, that super typhoon yesterday, Ghani, Raleigh, whichever the Philippines calls it, R-O-L-L-Y, in their area of responsibility, Roley, or Raleigh, whatever. I uh, remember that bend yesterday that it had to the southwest and west-southwest. Well, interestingly enough, in our part of the world here, uh, depending on how you look at it, maybe you're in the Philippines and it's not your part of the world, but you get the idea. In the western hemisphere, we're going to have another system bending to the southwest with Ada. And it's hard to keep up with these. Zeta, Ada, Raleigh, Goni, Goni, whatever. Gosh, just it's just craziness. Uh, and this is going to be a big problem for... Central America, specifically Honduras and Nicaragua. Here's a close-up satellite animation courtesy of the weathernerds.org site. South of Jamaica with the center of circulation and the most amount of energy, but there are a few lightning strikes up here that you can see detected by the GO-16 satellite, and some of these bands will work their way up to the north and affect Jamaica. Uh, here is the center of the tropical storm. And here you have the border of Honduras and Nicaragua. Honduras is up here, Nicaragua to the south. And this is going to make landfall probably south of that border area. The terrain down there is quite rugged. We can see that on our own tracking map. This is our uh, Hurricane Track Insider crowdfunded tracking map. And I like it because we can see the relief, as it's called. And you notice once this gets inland from the coast that the terrain and the elevation goes up very quickly very mountainous and rugged through here that will do two things that will disrupt the circulation very quickly after landfall break it apart eat up that low level center the mid and upper level moisture will continue the vorticity with it etc but it's also going to squeeze out a tremendous amount of rain and you got all that moisture coming in and you get those uh, winds coming up those mountains you call that orographic lift or upslope flow where the air is forced up those mountains and it's going to wring that rain out in a big way. It'll be fairly slow moving and that's going to result in a tremendous amount of rain, 20 to 30 inches. And as we have seen in the past, that can lead to catastrophic flooding. And so the folks down here in Central America, uh, hopefully the word can be spread quickly that people can evacuate these low lying areas that are adjacent to streams and rivers. The mudslides, the just tremendous amounts of rainfall can create unbelievable torrents of flooding, muddy, debris-filled flows that just come roaring down. If it happens at night, that's even worse. Um, I do believe we're going to see quite a bad situation, pretty nasty humanitarian disaster unfold down there. Water uh, temperatures, this is the upper ocean heat content, and that is still quite formidable in this region where ADA is headed. And just to kind of make sure you're aware, even the rest of the Caribbean and Southwest Atlantic Basin over here, very much alive in terms of upper ocean heat content, no question about it. And that being said, will there be any threat from ADA for the United States? First of all, of course, our concern initially is for Central America. And this is going to be a big problem, as I talked about, for Honduras, Nicaragua, and Nicaragua especially. Uh, but two, like I mentioned, Jamaica, you could get some rainfall out of this. This is the vorticity, the energy at the lower levels of the atmosphere, 5,000 feet, or what we call the 850 millibar level. 
And this is the GFS, the Global Forecast System, initialized 12Z today, Zulu time. Now, 7 a.m. Eastern time, it's Eastern time plus five hours, that's your Zulu time. And since we did, or UTC, Universal Time Coordinate, and since we in uh, the United States do the whole daylight savings time thing for most states, we switch back to standard time today. Nevertheless, universal time and Zulu time doesn't change. So what do we have? Well, this is the next several days. You can see the vorticity signature becomes markedly improved. And then it has that southwest dive there. We go back. You see that? It kind of goes down to the southwest a little bit. Strong high pressure coming in over Texas and over the northwest Gulf of Mexico here, acting to block and literally kind of push this thing down. That's a little dramatic there with what I drew, but it came across. It's going to feel that higher pressure and bend to the southwest. Uh, the pressures up here are higher. Pressures down here are lower. So this is basically submissive, if you will, to this higher pressure. It just cannot go into that bubble of high pressure. It doesn't work that way. So Ada will get shoved into Central America, uh, uh, Nicaragua, you know, specifically. But a lot of moisture down there with that overall envelope of energy, and then it kind of festers around through days four and five, and then we just have to watch and see at day six. There's day six there, and day seven, if anything is left, if some of the energy pops out, reorganizes over the very warm waters of the Caribbean. Um, I don't know. Nobody knows for sure. Just a large envelope of energy down here. The model is trying to figure it out. The heat that's down there associated with this system, tropical cyclones, are warm core heat systems. And there's a lot of energy there, a lot of things for these models to resolve. Uh, and it's definitely something we need to keep an eye on, whether it's specifically ADA and its DNA gets left over, its remnants, to become ADA again, if you will, after it kind of dissipates over Honduras and Nicaragua, or is it going to be that an entirely new entity develops, <clears throat> potentially threatening um, Cuba with impacts, the Bahamas maybe, and maybe Florida? I don't know. You know, it's looking a little bit better than it did yesterday when the GFS was implying a direct hurricane threat. That seems to be diminishing, but you never know. You know how the year has gone. They kind of pop up in the eight-day time frame, then they disappear, and then they come back again much closer, two to three days out. It's been kind of the way it's been, so we'll have to see if we can continue that or if we break precedence and do something different this time, always keeping us on our toes. All right? All right, well, at least that's it, uh, at least for the Atlantic Basin. The remnants, the leftovers of that super typhoon yesterday, Move through the Philippines. You've seen some of the damage and the issues they've had there on social media. And <clears throat> I'll address that some more tomorrow as well. Uh, trying to track back and see what people captured and how people are doing in the Philippines. Until then, you guys have a great rest of your Sunday. Welcome to November, the last month of the hurricane season, hopefully. Hopefully this will be it. And hopefully it will get over sooner rather than later. As always, thank you for tuning in and giving me a part of your day. I appreciate it. I am Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track. I will talk to you tomorrow.